talking at, to the senior uh, research seminar. And we're going into what is a case study. So what we've done before is that we've done a literature review based on what the what you're interested in for your the possibility for your um, project next semester. And then um, done a mind map, mapping out ideas that went into the literature review. That's been brought in. Now the thing is, is that now that you know a lot more about what's out in the field, about what you're interested in, and or the fact that you've been out looking for things, and you've got an idea of what you want to look at. What we want to do now is a case study. And what is that? So, don't really look at that. Um, a case study is really, it's just another version of a research approach, and basically it's meant to get you deep into multiple aspects of this thing that you're chasing, you know, that you're looking looking to find that's going to influence your 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 senior animation project, whatever it may be. So, I mean, really just doing case studies is, along with the literature review, are very established versions of, um, you know, of, of different research strategies to inform future work. So, but in this case, we're going to look at it to um, look at uh, aspects of culture, media, or society relevant to your project. I'm going to be focusing a lot on animation, thinking about animation, and but those of you who are working in different areas, you know, can apply this methodology to what you want to do too. So, before we get started, let's talk about what the parameters are for the project, right? Approximately 1,500 words. Here's the, the name structure, ADR 492, case study, name, ID, PDF. And due date is the 2nd of November. So, one of two ways, uh, I'm going to frame this one of two ways. You can do a case study a lot of different ways, but I'm going to pretty much give you a choice of two structures. One is to look at three aspects of one project or compare and contrast three pieces of media that point towards what you want to do. And what I mean by point towards what you want to do is just the idea of saying, you know, what we're doing is that we're looking for something, you know, that's going to inform the senior project in, anima in the animation major for the year of 2021. So, um, so the thing is, is that what we're doing is that we're taking one idea, neither finding three examples and comparing and, and contrasting, or taking one piece and pulling it, and taking one piece of media and pulling it apart and trying to see what we're trying to find. So the thing is, is that before we talk about that, I want to get into maybe seven really good points about having a good case study. And the first one is be realistic about your own expectations. Um, keep the idea of scope in your mind, you know. And if this was America, I'd make a joke and I'd say not the mouthwash. There's a brand of mouthwash called Scope and that would be, if we were in America, this would be funny, but we're in Arabia, so it's not very funny, but it just means just don't think of too much. In other words, keep your, keep your um, ideas in a relatively narrow area. In other words, say, for example, maybe if you're talking about Disney, you know, you'd be looking at maybe, um, oh, I forget the dog's down in the bottom here, but I mean, you maybe you'd be talking about 101 Dalmatians versus Lady and the Tramp uh, versus Goofy or something like that, or something like that. Um, second one, 
hey, what's interesting in this? Why are you going after this, you know, other than, you know, trying to, you know, the idea that I'm in a class and I have to do this. You know what? You might as well pick something interesting, right? So what's interesting? What's, you know, think about it. One of my favorite animations is The Incredibles, and here we have the amazing Edna, Edna Mode, who we'll talk about more later. And why are you focusing on this? And in the end, when you take it into the final project, make it interesting to me too, because I mean, in the end, making an animation isn't really about you. It's about creating an experience for your audience. I mean, it's, it's something, it's a story that you're burning to tell. But the thing is, is that what you're doing is, is that you're creating an experience for me. You're telling, you want to tell me about something. And that's, you know, um, you want to make it interesting. You want to tell me what you're interested in and share it with me. Number three. Make it so I can understand it. This goes back to the idea that I was talking about before. You're creating an, a piece of emotional content, to quote Bruce Lee, and you're communicating it to me. And the thing is, is that you want me to understand what you're talking about. What is, what is that thing about in human experience? Or non-human experience. We won't go into that. That gets that gets funny. But what is that thing that you're trying to tell me? And what am I going to get out of it? You know what? You may ask what you're going to get. Out. No, I, I want to ask what 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 I'm going to get out of it. You know, what are you giving me? How am I going to understand it? Tell me. Number four, you think that you're going to get away from this, but you're just not. You know, communication is a lot about just the classic cinematic narrative art. You know, you think you're going to get away, you're, you think you're going to get away from this, but I mean, really, it's, it's, it's really one of the cornerstones of communication. So the thing is, is that you know, consider your case study as a little bit of a story. As I, as as you want to make this as compelling as you can. So, here's what I'm I'm saying. And actually, believe it or not, this is kind of what was taught me in my first public speaking speaking class back in 1983. Amazing. Like, tell me what you're gonna tell me. Tell me briefly what you found. Why is it interesting? Why is it useful? And you know what? Tell me about your examples. Just go through them. Don't try to justify them. You know, just 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 tell me what you've got. And then and then the thing is, is that then just tell me this thing that you found after you went through looking at all this stuff. And then give me a summary. Resolve the whole thing. Boom. Not rocket science. Okay. Let's go to number five. In your study, give me good media examples. You know what? You're telling me a story. Give me some great visuals. Boom, there you are. Number six, you know, if you think about the things that we talked about before, that things are interesting, let your case studies speak for themselves. I mean, you're interested in them. There's something interesting in them. Let them speak. And also the other thing is, is that give yourself enough time to talk about them and, you know, and write. And um, this will get you to 1,500 words, no problem. And then number seven. When I say this, think, think about this just in the back of your head, how this is going to relate to your final project. 
So just think in the back of your mind how this might relate to your project. It doesn't have to, but you know you're going to go there eventually, you know? Mr. Anderson, do you hear that sound? You know what that is? That's the sound of inevitability. Sorry. Anyway, Matrix quote. Um, but, however, uh, I'm trying to make it so your senior project is not an oncoming train. So that's it. And by the way, that's, a, um, that's actually a senior animation from uh, Savannah College in Art and Design in the United States. So anyway, let's get back to this idea of the case study, right? So there's a lot of approaches to it. Here's like, you know, like a whole bunch of comparisons of Miyazaki, right? We could really go crazy on this. But um, I know that you like examples and you like formulas, but the thing is, is that there really isn't one formula to a case study. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it, a lot of different methods. Um, you know, like a literature review, it's an investigation that can have a lot of different shapes. There are, are some, there are a few pretty accepted forms though, and I'm, I'm going to stick to two. And what are those? One is compare and contrast, and another one is focusing on three aspects of one piece. Pretty straightforward. And I've got examples up on, up online. So compare and contrast, here we have our lovely colleagues from Bristol, England at uh, Ardmore. And compare and contrast is really a traditional method of doing a case analysis. Basically, can, it takes uh, three examples that you feel, things that you, you feel relate to your final, and then compare and contrast them. So say, for example, pick one to three things are in common in each of your media and mostly talk, you know, mostly talk about them or if only talk about them. So the thing is, is that the important thing in doing a compare and contrast is looking at one, you know, looking, looking at aspects of one or two aspects of these three things and just studying that. And that's it. Find something with three things and you know three things with something in common and talk about that thing. And that's it. And if you talk about anything else, you can talk about a little bit of other stuff to give a little context. Like say for example, you could talk about maybe British culture and how it relates to stop motion with the different works with Ardmore Studios. Um, fair enough. Or the other thing is is the you know the role of Japanese, um, the role of Japanese, um, the role of, uh, of of Japanese folklore in the films of Miyazaki, or um, let's see here, uh, the different ways that media communicated in the Matrix franchise, you know, or you could just take a look at the anime series based on the movie The Matrix called The Animatrix. That would be kind of cool. Or you could, you could compare and contrast Tron versus Tron Legacy. In other words, how something that was entirely hand-coded in computer graphics com uh, compared to something that was, you know, 2010 versus 1984. That could be, you know, very, very relevant. Okay, so the next one is taking one thing and drilling into it. So, and think about things, you know, something that relates to your project, and you go and look at it and say, okay, what relates most? So, okay, we're talking about The Incredibles, right? So here's a bunch of stuff that you may or may not realize, but this is... The Incredibles really ties into something, it ties into a lot of American mass culture. 
So, and a lot of American media culture. So, I'm going to do my little case study on The Incredibles. Here we go. First of all, one big, big thing in American media culture is something called the situation comedy. And a family situation comedy. It's basically where you just had this kind of this funny situation, these funny this funny characters in this family, and you just you just set them up and watch them go. And you know, it's just a weird situation and you just watch them go on. So I have some things here like the Munsters. It's sort of like the you know, like all the classic horror movie characters, you know, what if they were a family? And then what if they had a normal niece? You know, and and the funny thing is, is that the normal niece was always kind of a disappointment to all the movie monster family. That's kind of funny. Um, all in the Family was a 19, 1970s um, situation comedy where you had, um, you know, um, a hippie daughter and her husband, you know, versus this uh, very working class, very racist, you know. Um, uh, husband and his uh, his wife, who is his wife was, and actually it's very funny is that The Simpsons is kind of based on All in the Family, but the thing is is that The Simpsons doesn't have any of the kind of controversy that All in the Family had. Uh, the Adams Family actually is based on a cartoon from the New Yorker magazine from the 1920s and 1930s about something similar to the Munsters, but a family all of their own, basically just considered, you know, the, the most, you know, freakish, unusual family you could ever find that did, did everything that was totally bizarre. And actually, the Adams Family as a franchise has been, you know, has, has had like three reboots uh, and a cartoon, and, you know, it's a really big franchise. It's really funny. And then um, you've got The Simpsons, of course, you know, and then um, The Family Guy. And then the other one here, I mean, there's just, you know, so many examples of, of family situation, com situation comedies or family, family situations. This is one called uh, Different Strokes, where basically this, um, this New York industrialist um, winds up adopting these two... Um, these two, uh, these two black kids, and and you know the the, the shorter guy actually uh, is you know just you know just one of these guys who had like these really kind of like goofy thing you know, you know had this goofy thing like what you saying Willis you know and it was just it was a big thing in in the in the seventies so anyway so you got this whole thing that the that the um, and that the Incredibles is kind of looking at this idea of you know the the, the family the family drama family sitcom and in American culture. Second one, the the superhero tradition. I mean, you know, like with the Marvel and DC universes and everything like that. You know, we we really take this for granted. We really take this for granted. We just kind of assume, oh, there's this there are these superheroes. But you know, superheroes came from somewhere. And they started in like the 1920s, in the 1930s or so, you know, like with like one of them like action comics with Superman and Batman. And, and here's, uh, here's issue number one of Iron Man. And actually, this was when I was, this was when I was young. And uh, I actually had a copy of that and I sold it. I was really stupid for doing it because that's a lot of money now. Um... And actually, a lot of um, it's amazing that actually a lot of um, you know comic book artists and actually the uh, the guys who started Superman actually from my hometown of uh, Akron, Ohio. I mean, you know, near Cleveland. And so it's like ton I, I had lots of friend, lots of friends in the comic book industry. You know, tons of them. So, and then the last one, the one that you're not gonna get. You're, you know what? Can you guess where I'm going? Edna Mode. And you know what? She was actually based off of a super famous, she was the most famous costume designer in Hollywood in the 1950s. Her name was Edith Head. So the thing is, is that 
you know, you could kind of talk about how the Incredibles, you know, is, is looking at these various aspects of culture and how, you know, you're thinking about, you know, about kind of either taking another, uh, another animation and, you know, kind of taking these things and kind of mapping that, them onto what you're doing, or maybe you're interested in the same sorts of things that the Incredibles did. So there you go. And then the other thing is, is that there are some other things that you could go into the Incredibles as well, like they were influenced by the animation style of UPA and so on. I mean, a lot of stuff there. So two ways of doing this, you know, you can drill into one piece really deep, or you can compare and contrast. So what do I want? What do I expect? Um, got about two weeks to do this. Um, November 2nd, 2020, uh, 1500 words. Here's the name style, ADR 492, case study, name ID.pdf. Um, at least three illustrations. Um, APA format, three citations, and then after this, I'll give you a week to do your poster presentation, and then we do the final paper, then it's done. Fantastic. Okay, so don't worry about those yet, though. Don't worry about the poster and the paper yet. You've got two weeks to do the case study. Okay? All right. Thanks a lot. We're done for now. I'll get this online and uh, hope you have a little